Welcome back everyone to 10.3 polar coordinates. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and graph some polar equations, uh, and then we're gonna just do a little bit of calculus. So let's get right into it with a definition. So we're upgrading, right? We're not gonna be dealing with just points anymore, but full on equations and graphs. So it could be looking like f is a function of theta, or we could have you know, a function of both r and theta, typically equaling zero, uh, consist of all points P where we have at least one polar representation, R theta, whose coordinates satisfy the equation. So look at this, we have R equals two sine theta. We're gonna graph the curve using point plotting method. We're gonna look at uh, trying to guess what kind of geometric figure, and then finally we're gonna convert this into Cartesian coordinates. So using the point plotting method, we're gonna choose values for theta, and we're gonna see what kind of R, what kind of, uh, usually we call this like a radius, pops out of these things. So I'm going to choose, you know, your standard unit circle values. They're all along our um, axes down here, so I don't have to remember them. And it turns out after you get past pi, or even really pi itself, the claim is we don't need any more points. Right? So there are the values. Once we get past pi, though, uh, we won't need any more points. And I will show you why that is the case here in just a minute. So let's go ahead and start plotting. If we were to plug in first theta equals 0, we would get r is 0. If we were to plug in theta equals pi over 6, we would get, well, 2 times sine of pi over 6 is going to be 1. 2 times sine of pi over 4 is going to be root 2. 2 times sine of pi over 3, that's going to be root 3 and so on, right? So the next value is going to be 2. And now we start decreasing. So sine of 2 pi over 3 is going to be root 3 over 2, so that's going to give us root 3 altogether, then root 2, then root 1, which is the same thing as 1, uh, and then 2 times 0 is 0. Oops, I did a horrible job with that 1. There we go. Okay, and now uh, 2 times sine of 7 pi over 6. Well, sine of 7 pi over 6 is going to be negative 1 half. Oops, sorry about that. Negative 1 half, so that's going to be 2 times negative 1 half is negative 1. And the claim is we can stop here. You can keep going if you wanted, but we won't get anything new or interesting. So let's go ahead and start plotting these points. So 0, 0, and then pi over 6, 1. So if I'm, oops, sorry about this, aiming in the pi over 6 direction, I need to walk out 1. There we go. If I'm aiming in the pi over 4 direction, I need to walk out square root of 2. Now, square root of 2 is the same thing as around 1.4. Square root of 3 is around 1.7. So square root of 2, there we go. Square root of 3, aiming in the pi over 3 direction. Now in the pi over 2 direction, I need to walk out 2. In the 2 pi over 3 direction, I need to walk out root 3. So that's again around 1.7-ish. So here's the 2 pi over 3 direction. I need to walk out 1.7-ish. So right around there. In the 3 pi over 4 direction, I need to walk out to root 2. In the 5 pi over 6, I walk out 1, and now in the pi direction, I walk out 0. So we can see that we've actually started overlapping points. If I was to continue, if I was to go to 7 pi over 6, I would need to walk out negative 1. So I'd walk backwards 1. So I'd actually cover up this point. If we were to continue even farther, if I was to walk out, aim in the 5 pi over 4 direction, our function would say to actually go backwards and continue, we go backwards, we actually cover up all of these same points again. So the claim is as we go beyond pi, we're not actually getting new points on the plane. We're just covering up the other points a second time. So the shape that we're gonna get is gonna look something like this. It connects all of these points. And to me, this looks a lot like a circle. So for part B, what geometric figure does this look like, right? So I'm going to guess a circle. It looks like the circle has been shifted up one. So the center's around zero, one. And it looks like it has a radius of around one.
Okay, so the question is, can we confirm this by transforming our curve into Cartesian coordinates to actually show that this is a circle? So looking at our equation, r equals 2 sine theta, staring at this thing, well, we think this right-hand side looks a lot like y, right? It has the sine theta. If only it had an extra r, right? r sine theta, that's the same thing as y. So I'd really like to put an r here. Now an r on the left-hand side would also be advantageous because we have a formula for r squared. We don't have a formula for r, but we have a formula for r squared. So I'm thinking we should multiply uh, an r on both sides of this because then the right-hand side becomes 2y and the left-hand side becomes x squared plus y squared. So now we have this into Cartesian coordinates but it doesn't look like anything that I know. So I'm going to use a method called completing the square. I've subtracted 2y from both sides, and I'm going to add something to both sides in order to make the square complete. So the way that we do this is that we look at this b value, is what it's called. We divide by 2 and we square it. So when we take negative 2, we divide by 2 and we square it, we get positive 1. So this suggests that I should add 1 to both sides of my equation in order to make a perfect square. Now the perfect square that I've created is x squared plus, sorry, here's the perfect square, y minus 1 quantity squared. Why is it a minus 1? Well, it's always this b value divided by 2. So it's the negative 2 divided by 2, that gives me the negative 1. Now this looks like a circle equation. It looks like the center's been shifted up 1, so that's the y minus 1, been shifted up 1, and it looks like the radius is 1. So in fact, yes, this is a circle equation. Again, the radius is 1, and the center is 0, 1. All right, so that's how we graph polar equations. Let's go ahead and try a slightly more complicated one. In our next example, we're considering the curve given by well, 1 over r is equal to sine theta plus cosine theta. And now theta is actually specified. It's ranging between negative pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. Again, we're trying to graph. We want to know what kind of geometric figure is this. And then we're going to transform this into Cartesian coordinates to confirm our suspicions for b. So we don't have r equals. We actually have 1 over r equals. So I'm going to make a table, but I'm going to have three values here. I'm going to have my theta. I'm going to have what 1 over r is. And then I'm going to know, uh, I'm going to write down what r is. Okay, so yeah, just adding an intermediate step. So if I'm looking at negative pi over 4, that's down here, that's the same thing as 7 pi over 4, and 3 pi over 4 is up here. So the values that are in between this are negative pi over 6, we have 0, we have pi over 6, all the way up to 2 pi over 3. Now notice, because we have parentheses, we don't include either negative pi over 4 or 3 pi over 4, right? So we don't include the endpoints. Now let's go ahead and start plugging some of these values in to our equation. So sine theta plus cosine theta. So if I plug in negative pi over 6, sine of theta is going to be negative 1 half, and then cosine of theta is going to be root 3 over 2. So that's what 1 over r has to equal. Let's go ahead and finish up our other 1 over r values, and then I'll come back and get r's. If I plug in 0, I get 0 plus 1. If I plug in pi over 6 for theta, I get 1 half plus root 3 over 2. If I plug in pi over 4, that's going to give me root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2. If I plug in pi over 3, I get root 3 over 2 plus 1 half. Then when I plug in pi over 2 for theta, I get 1 plus 0. And finally, when I plug in 2 pi over 3 for theta, I get root 3 over 2 minus 1 half. Oops, there we go, minus 1 half. So now I need to take the reciprocal of all these things. And I'll be honest, I don't really want to do that uh, by hand. I need to plot these things on the graph. So I'm going to cheat here and use a calculator. So 1 over my answers from my second column should give me the radius. 
So my first value here is going to be right around 2.73 and change. When I do 1 over 1, well, that one I can do in my head. That's 1. You can notice that this table seems to be awfully symmetric. Right? So I'm actually plugging in two values each time I type one of these in. So for instance, 1 half plus root 3 over 2, when I find the reciprocal of this, not only do I know that my third entry is 0.73, but also my fifth entry is 0.73. And then finally, root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2, that's going to be, well, just root 2. So 1 over root 2 that's going to give me 0.7. So now let's go ahead and plot these on my coordinate axes here. So the first thing when I'm aiming in the pi over, ne sorry, negative pi over 6 direction, I need to walk out 2.73. So there's 2.5, there's 2.73-ish. When I'm, uh, sorry, I'll also do the mirror point as well, right? So when I'm aiming in the 2 pi over 3 direction, I also need to walk out 2.73. So here's the 2 pi over 3, and I'm walking out 2.73. Now, when I'm aiming in either the 0 or the pi over 2, I need to walk out 1. So here and here. When I'm aiming in either the pi over 6 or the pi over 3 direction, I need to walk out 0.73. And then when I'm aiming in the pi over 4 direction, I need to walk out 0.7. So pretty close to 0.73. So now if I go ahead and connect all of these points, to me this looks like a pretty straight line, all things considered. All right, so let's go ahead and erase these bounds here. This looks like a pretty straight line. So I'm going to go ahead and guess that the geometric figure is a line. Let's go ahead and see if that's true by transforming this into Cartesian coordinates. So my equation, oops, sorry about that. My equation is 1 over r is equal to cosine theta plus sine theta. And now I don't like fractions. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply through by r on both sides. And you can see this actually helps me a lot, right? Because r cosine theta is the same thing as x, and r sine theta is the same thing as y. So I've actually created 1 equals x plus y, which I could rearrange to say that y is equal to 1 minus x. So this is the equation of the line. It's an equation with a line with y-intercept 1, so there's that point, and slope negative 1. So when I go to the right one, I should have to go down one. So indeed, this all checks out. It is a line with y-intercept 1 and slope negative 1. OK, the last topic that we're going to go over is going to be tangent lines. So the idea here is if my r values are given as a function of theta, and we regard that theta is actually a parameter, like t in some sense. It's telling us about a specific time almost. Then we can write its parametric equations as x equals r cosine theta, where r is some function of theta. So this is going to be x is f of theta times cosine theta. And y we know is r sine theta. But if r is a function of theta, well, then we can just write it as f of theta times sine of theta. Then we can go ahead and use the parametric equation for finding slope of a tangent line, along with the product rule, to give us what the slope of the tangent line for polar coordinates needs to be. So dy dx, the slope of the tangent line, is going to be dy d theta, our parameter, divided by dx d theta. Again, our parameter is theta in this case. So if I was to take the derivative, dy d theta, so I need to use a product rule. So the derivative of the first, that's going to be f prime of theta, whatever that equation is, times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second, which is going to be cosine of theta, divided by dx d theta. So now I'm looking back here at my x equation. If I take its derivative, again, I need to use a product rule, the derivative of the first times the second plus the first 
times the derivative of the second. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So I'm going to go ahead and change this plus to a minus sign. Now, quite often you'll see, uh, since we know r is equal to f of theta, sometimes you'll see this equation written a bit differently. So that is r prime, instead of f prime of theta, times sine theta plus r cosine theta divided by r prime cosine theta minus r sine theta. So either way is a, uh, fine to represent the slope of the tangent line. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply this newfound formula uh, to a specific example. We have a curve given by r is 1 plus 2 cosine theta, and we want to know what's the slope of the tangent line at theta is pi over 6. So maybe one of the first things we could do uh, I'm going to go ahead and paste my formula down here just so it, uh, I don't have to keep on scrolling back up and down. One of the first things we notice is we need an r prime. So if I take the derivative, I'm going to get negative 2 sine theta. The next thing is that we want the tangent line at a very specific theta value, right? Theta is pi over 6. So let's go ahead and figure out what some of these sines and cosines and r values are for r specific theta. So we have sine of r theta, which is pi over 6, is 1 half. Cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. Our r value, right, 1 plus 2 cosine theta. Well, cosine theta, we already know, is root 3 over 2. So this is just going to be 1 plus root 3. And then finally, r prime at r specific theta value is going to be just negative 2 times 1 half. So that's going to be negative 1. Okay, now we need to go ahead and plug these values into our formula up here. dy dx is equal to r prime, aka negative 1, times sine of theta, sine of theta is 1 half, plus r, 1 plus root 3, times cosine theta, and the cosine at r theta is root 3 over 2, divided by r prime times cosine theta minus r, times sine theta, which is again 1 half. Now let's go ahead and multiply by 2 on top and on bottom. And we can see when we distribute this, we're going to get rid of all of these fractions in the numerator and denominator. So these nicely all cancel out. And this simplifies down to just negative 1 plus root 3. right? So that's when we distribute the root 3 to both the 1 and the other root 3. Uh, and then we get, of course, the plus 3, divided by negative root 3 minus 1 minus root 3, right, distributing that negative sign. So again, simplifying down one last step, we get 2 plus root 3 divided by negative 1 minus 2 root 3. All right, and that is our final answer, the slope of the tangent line of our curve at pi over 6. And while it doesn't look like a lot, it's hard to appreciate, I guess. Uh, it would be a big pain to try to transform this into Cartesian coordinates and then take the derivative, then plug in the specified point. So this has actually saved us a lot of time. All right, I'll see you next time in 10.4.